uh, for prayers or recitation, prayer and recitation should always come from uh, the, should be combined with meditation. So when we say meditation here, as I said earlier, meditation is the consolidation of all your thoughts. Your mind is broken. Your 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 mind is broken into many different uh, many um, thousands of fragments. So we try to collect all of them together and uh, make it uh, a big mirror. So consolidation of all the broken fragments of your mind. Uh, that is what meditation is about. So in this regard, we have to collect our mind wherever it is dispersed, whether it is in South or East or North or market or somebody, your friend's house, whatever, we have to collect it back. In this, For this, instead of thinking outside, think internally. So the thought that is thinking about car, that is thinking about bananas, apples, uh, that is thinking about sky. So what is that thought? That thought is actually a projection that we may have seen earlier outside. It is a projection made internally by our mind. So if that is the projection made by our mind, so what is our mind? How does our mind look like? Does mind have an appearance of its own rather than the ones that is shaped by uh, anything, uh, anything that is, uh, does mind have a shape uh, or a form that is other than the one, uh, uh, other than the one that is molded by our experiences in the external world? So in other words, is there, a, is there an external reality to our mind, our mental state? Is mind just a projection of all the things that we have seen and imagined seeing? Or is there something really there as a mind? Let's, let's meditate first on the form of mind, form of mind meaning what is mind, how mind looks like, how mind looks like, how, how do you think mind is, what is the shape of mind, and when after that let's think about what is mind. When, for example, when we think of a cup, our mind is actually projecting a cup, and that is our mind. When we think of a ship, our mind is projecting an image of a ship, and that is our mind. So when we remove the images that is projected by the mind, the ship, the ocean, the cup, is there a mind afterwards? Okay, reside in this state for one minute. Okay, so when we remove, okay, so um, mind is empty of inherent existence. That is like any other forms of uh, any any other matter, any other rea any other um, entities, any other phenomena in the world. Mind is inherent, empty of inherent existence. is dependent on cause and condition. That is for sure. But more than that, when you remove anything that the mind conjures. 
anything that is thought by the mind, anything that is projected by the mind, when you remove all those images, is there a mind left behind? When you stop thinking about anything, even about thoughts, if you stop thinking about thoughts even, will there be a mind? To stop thinking about thoughts, you have to tell your mind to stop thinking about a thought and then there is a back process. So it's endless, it's infinite. Uh, so you also, one also under, one can also understand from this nature that a mind is not only inherently uh, uh, non-existent, but it is entirely made up uh, by all the uh, external objects that it conceives. Now we say that uh, all the phenomena that is that is out there as we experiences ex as as we experience it is due to the fact that our mind can perceive it, right? But the mind experiences, the mind perceives only the things. That is, mind for the mind to exist, to be able to perceive the things that is externally out there, the mind has to rely on, depend upon the objects that it is actually projecting. So you see this, there is this uh, um, dance, dancing of interplay mind depending on the object and object depending on the mind. So in this regard, the mind is entirely, uh, not entirely, but the mind is dependent on the object and the object is also dependent on the mind to uh, rise. So you see this interdependency. Okay, so now with this, this now we have a <clears throat> certain idea of what a mind is. We may not have all the answers, but we have a certain idea. So let so we also know that mind is in a certain way the mind is a projector. But uh, for the projector to, to for the projector to project something, uh, cassette the disc in the into the projector for the it, for it to play. So we 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 understand the interplay. Uh, so in this regard, let your mind which is very much dependent upon external objects, which is also very much dependent upon the mind to be established or to be validated. So in this union of uh, interplay between uh, external objects and the internal mind, the projected and the projector, let your mind uh, project, or in other words, visualize in front of you a Medicine Buddha. So Medicine Buddha, doesn't necessarily have to be, when we say Medicine Buddha, he or she is not an external, independently external individual out there, okay? So it is not like you and me. So you are here, you are there and I'm here. So we are different people. So Medicine Buddha is not in that sense. As I said before, Buddha is something like saying good person, uh, tall person, t uh, short person, like that. So Medicine Buddha is also, understand Medi Medicine Buddha as a fit and healthy person. The perfect, the most perfect fit and healthy person. That is what Medicine Buddha is. So, okay. So think of Medicine Buddha in front of you. So I'm not gonna go into much great detail. You all know the uh, medicine, most of you know Medicine Buddha. So Medicine Buddha is the perfect, uh, healthy and fit of yourself. Medicine Buddha, as we know it today, is uh, we are praying to Medicine Buddha as we know it today. That is uh, what we call um, the external Medicine Buddha. By practicing the external Medicine Buddha, we will internalize ourselves into becoming the Medicine Buddha as well. Uh, so visualize a medicine Buddha in front of you, and then we will recite uh, the medicine Buddha mantra, which is again the manifestation of the healing effects, the enlightened healing qualities of the Buddha. The medicine Buddha's image is the physical manifestation, emanation, and the mantra is the verbal emanation. 
of the healing qualities of the Buddha. So this is what we are going to visualize and recite. Hmm. Okay, so when we do the prayer, when we do the recitation, to people suffering injury, from depression, from anxiety, uh, from traumatic experiences, uh, then people suffering uh, through the cruelty of the society, uh, people suffering uh, from natural calamities, all, everyone, ourselves and others, everyone who is going through a difficult time. Uh, so we pray to the Medicine Buddha, who is the emanation of the healing power of the Buddha, and whose mantra is the verbal emanation, manifestation of the healing power of the Buddha uh, to help us heal. <clears throat> so if you know the mantra, recite the mantra. If you do not know the mantra, just send out good thoughts. Om Namo Bhagavate Vyagaja Guru Tendriya Babaraza Yada Bhagadaya Arahadya Samyasa Buddhaya Deyata Om Vyagaja Vyagaja Maha Vyagaja Vyagaja Nato Samanga Jeyaswa Deyata Om Vyagaja Vyagaja Maha Vyagaja Vyagaja Nato Samanga Jeyaswa Deyata Om Vyagaja Vyagaja Maha Vyagaja Vyagaja Nato Samanga Jeyaswa Deyata Om Vyagaja Vyagaja Maha Vyagaja Vyagaja Nato Samanga Jeyaswa Deyata Om Vyagaja so because of so because of um, because you sent out those positive thoughts good thoughts and because you recite the mantra, the medicine Buddha is uh, pleased. And uh, whenever people, people are happy, pleased, you will always see there is a radiance, right? Some, some sort of light. So in similar way, the, the immense amount of light, uh, illumin, uh, light lumin, Ill, uh, illuminates uh, from the medicine Buddha and it spreads to the all corner of the world, uh, including yourself, if you, uh, I mean, obviously, all of all of us have so many things to heal. So it is mental pain, physical pain, uh, or otherwise, all the pains that is within us and within others are are removed by this immense light of the medicine Buddha. So visualize that way, and because we are able to remove uh, the uh, negativities or afflictions in the mind of all sentient beings. For this great deed, all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas were very happy. And they were also rejoicing in, in your um, meritorious deeds. And because the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas are happy and uh, pleased, your merits are multiplied tremendously. And uh, so this multitude of um, merit accumulation of merit, we will dedicate that to all the sentient beings suffering in the world. Thank you. <laughs>